Hi, welcome from Horfield Observatory here in Bristol in the UK. It's a sunny September day and the purpose of this video is to really talk to you about budget astrophotography. Um, not a lot of us have got the sort of money to go out and spend two, three thousand pounds on a telescope, two, three thousand pounds on a camera. So I'm hoping that uh, what I talk to you about today will give you a little bit of a incentive to start this wonderful hobby. Anyway, without further ado, let's go out and I'll run through my setup and explain some of the prices and explain exactly what everything does and hopefully then you'll get a better idea of the sort of, for the sort of thing that you can buy on a budget and use for your astrophotography and astronomy. Okay, for everybody watching, this is my setup here in my back garden in Bristol. We'll start by going through the different parts and talking about what each individual thing does. As you can see for starters, I use a permanent mount that I built myself. This is an eight foot drain pipe. And what I've done is I put about four foot of it into the ground filled it full of cement, put rebar in it and then I attached a home built uh, connection to put the uh, to the pier to put the mount onto the stand itself and then made sure everything was flat etc and I made sure that the equatorial mount itself was pointing directly north which is up that way and everything's sturdy it works it, it does the job the mount itself is a Skywatcher EQ3 Pro this is a very good mount and very good sturdy it takes about 15 pounds worth of weight uh, which is more than enough for my Skywatcher which is on here at the moment initially I bought this mount with another telescope which was a Skywatcher Explorer 150p DS. Now I use the Skywatcher Explorer, you'll see a photo of it here, during the winter of last year, but after watching several other video YouTube channels, especially Astro Backyard, uh, Trevor's channel over there, I decided uh, I was to moving away from uh, reflector type telescopes and I would get myself a refractor. The mount and the original telescope I picked up from eBay for about £500, which wasn't bad at all. As I said, I took the uh, mount, I took the equatorial mount off of the original tripod and put it on its permanent base, and it works fine. Tracking is fantastic um, as long as you know to polar align. Uh, once you've done it once with a permanent mount, you shouldn't have to do it again unless you're really unlucky um, obviously make sure that you don't knock it or anything like that uh, otherwise you might have to go through setup again now the mount itself uses a system called SINSCAN this is the hand controller here this carries about 49,000 objects and once you've done your one or two or three star alignment uh, wherever you basically point click to set the telescope to it sends the telescope to that object although I now use my computer in the observatory over here um, to do all that using Stellarium etc but that will be for a future video probably the next video I do this particular mount um, comes with its own polar scope which you can see here Okay, I've, like I said, once I've polar aligned this mount, um, I don't really have to do this ever again unless I'm really unlucky um, and I have to go through the setup all over again. Although it didn't take that long to do, and as I said, um, using, using PhD 2, uh, this, this, it, it works really, it looks really, really, really good as a starter equatorial mount. Moving to the next piece of equipment, 
we have my Skywatcher Star Travel 102. Now, this isn't an APO, this isn't a triplet, this isn't a doublet, this is a just basic refractor scope. But as I didn't have that much money, uh, that much expendable money to spend, um, I bought this one and it works just fine. It works fantastic. It's, um, it cost about um, £185 when I bought it initially and uh, on this uh, mount it's lovely, it's balanced nice, it does the job. Um, I've got Bortle 8 skies here in Bristol and I don't know whether you've seen some of my images, there's a couple just coming up now. You'll see that it produces a really nice, nice image. Um, probably not as crystal clear as your uh, other APOs, the triplets, etc. Which eventually I'll buy one, um, as and when I've got the spare cash. But this just, this does just fine as it is. Moving on to the next piece of equipment, um, you have my uh, Altair Hypercam 183C Pro Color CCD camera from Altair Astro. Uh, this one cost me about £416 and it is brilliant. It's uh, got a nice cooling setting within, within it and it produces a really, really nice image. Um, again, when I f initially started I was using a DSLR, I was using the um, Canon ES 700D which was really really good with the uh, Explorer 150p but I decided that I needed something with a little bit more oomph and decided on this camera. Um, as, a, as a point of reference for as a starting camera you can't go too wrong with this. I would highly recommend it. Moving on to the guide scope. This is just a generic guide scope that I picked up from eBay. It's a 50 millimeter, and uh, I, I think I paid about 50 pounds for it off of eBay. It does the job. It's uh, very, very good for guiding with PhD2. Uh, and yeah, again, it, it's, it was 50 pounds. I mean, uh, it just goes to show you—you you, know—you don't have to spend inordinate amounts of money to start in this. Uh, amazing hobby. Um, you could update as and when you go along, but um, as of the, the, this moment in time, you know this guide scope works really, really well. I'm getting some good, really, really good images beyond um, one minute. Uh, I'm doing five minute, you know, exposures with it and with the with the telescope itself and no problems at all, I get really pinpoint stars and all in all it's really good. The guide camera itself is a T7C that I got again from eBay for £70. It's really, really, really sensitive for the money. As you can see, you know, it, it does everything, it works really well with this 50mm guide scope. Um, and as I said, I, I cannot say enough, you, you don't have to spend amazing amounts of money on this hobby to get into it. You know, you can get some really, really good images and really, really get some, some, some great enjoyment um, with, with, with what, what you see in front of you. Um, yes, I could have spent thousands of pounds, I didn't have thousands of pounds, so I didn't, and this is what I've ended up with, and I'm really, really pleased with the setup. Um, everything works really, really well, and talks to each other really well. Um, I'll go through all the wiring and everything in a sec, um, and explain exactly what everything does. Okay, so starting at the uh, T7 Auto Guider, the camera. Uh, what we have here is we have the lead that goes from here, that goes down into the SIN scan, uh, just here for the auto guider. Uh, as I said, this is now powered uh, all the way through to the uh, control centre over there, and that is used in conjunction with uh, PhD2 uh, push here dummy. Uh, the next thing up here is the USB 
the USB runs from the back of the camera and plugs in to the USB hub down here. Next we have the camera itself, the, uh, the Altair Hypercam, the 183C and the USB again runs from here into the USB hub here. Okay. Now the telescope itself and the TinScan unit is powered uh, via the power cable here that runs into the mains here and everything then runs down along the floor back into the shared stroke control center into my computer and from there I use um, Astro Backyard Sharp Cap PHD2 and Stellarium uh, all to do the astrophotography on a night and that is everything in a nutshell really uh, what I intend to do with the next video is I'm going to go through a normal night's setup I'll talk through exactly everything I do uh, from the star alignment through to setting up uh, PhD um, and using all the other software that I use to do my capturing but um, from a point of view of astronomy on a budget this is it this is it that in total I think I've probably spent on everything including the the original telescope um, no more than about 1300 1400 pounds for the whole lot um, you know you can spend that just on the scope alone um, and certainly on the camera so I'm hoping that from showing um, the kind of setup that I use uh, for the sort of images I'm getting um, that um, I've given some incentive and you know to, to people out there to, to go out and, and, and buy some equipment and and start your journey in uh, in this amazing hobby um, yeah so there it is that's my setup um, as I said uh, the next video I'm gonna start going through you know how I initially set up all my equipment on a to, to do the astro imaging on a night um, I'll start off by you know watching showing you how to do the ones uh, one or two star alignment I do a one star but uh, that'll be the next thing that I do is to go through everything and then hopefully um, that give, uh, give you an idea of the sort of way I start <coughs> using everything <coughs> to go through um, and do my astrophotography I hope this has been useful um, I've put all the relevant links under the video um, for you guys to have a look at and go, and go away and have a look at the different things that I've bought and, and I use um, any comments would be grateful as I've never done a video log before this is the first one I've ever done so um, I'm hoping it, I came across well and not too cheesy um, if you have any more questions or any other comments um, and help, any helpful guidance for future videos let me know um, I'm hoping to do a lot more of these and um, as I said give those that are looking to come into the um, hobby um, but have not got that much money um, a glimpse of what you can do on on a budget so um, thanks very much for listening and uh, see you soon in clear skies I've seen things you people wouldn't believe <laughs> attack ships on fire on shore I watched sea beams glitter in the dark in the ten house of game. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears.